boy, what you doing in my seat? I'm like, this, this is, this is the first day of school. We don't even have assigned seats yet. What are you talking? You're ill, no. So then he, he, he goes up to me again, he's like, get your small, tiny little butt out that seat. That's my seat. Okay, so, sorry, I, I didn't mean it, but I'll, I'll move. Come on, Cammy, we're leaving this place. So, so this guy, he, he decides to call me tiny and puny. And when I go home, I look in the mirror, I'm, like, I'm not tiny or puny. Darn it. Yeah, I am. That, that hurt me. So when my, my uncle moved into my house um, about a few weeks after that, and man, I was hurting because he called, whatever he called me, and my uncle was a big gym guy, so he went to the gym almost every single day, and when he moved in, he wanted to find a gym over here. So I asked him, hey, uncle, can I go to the gym with you? I want, I want to learn how to, how to gains. So he was like, okay, come on, we'll find one. So we ended up finding a good one. And by my junior year, um, I ended up, I, I'm my height now, five foot 11, and I weighed 180 pounds by that time. So, um, I ended up gaining more muscle. I was like, you're not gonna call me tiny, you're not gonna call me puny, I'm gonna go ahead and get the gym, I'm gonna work hard, you go tell me nothing. But no matter what, even if, no matter if I gain weight or whatnot, people, I'll still have that thing in my mind saying you're tiny and you're puny. That, it just sucks. Like, it's like, I can look, enormous like the Incredible Hulk or and I'll just be like no I'm still small I need to go back and do some reps or something like that that some bodybuilders have that it's like when they're super huge and then they look in the mirror they see like a toothpick all right that that's an that affected me for a long time um, and it's just these negative things that people say has anyone ever had something negative said about them you've heard it sucks 500 people could come up to you and compliment you but when one person says one bad thing about you then your entire world just changes views. Has everyone ever felt that before? All right, well that, it's just, it sucks. But anyways, has anyone ever heard of Angry Birds? The, the game, obviously. For me, that was my toilet game. Um, that means that, you know, whenever I had a, I was holding it for a long time, I knew it was gonna be a very long battle in the bathroom. It was my game I used, you know, to pass time. Did everyone, everyone ever had these games? I bet you guys had these games. You're just not gonna admit it. You guys have all of those games, like 20 lined up. You guys are nasty. Just kidding, they have one too. So, in that game, there are different birds that do different things. The first bird I want to talk about is the yellow bird. The yellow bird, when you tap it, it goes super fast. I want to show you the yellow bird. Got the clip that shows the yellow bird. Simple speeding tip. Judge tells me I was going too fast, so I see your honor. <laughs> to be honest, I was. Mm -hmm. My one problem, that's a different story than you told last time. <laughs> is the fast bird, all right? How we're fast. Do we speak so fast that we don't realize what we're saying? Or have you ever gotten an argument with somebody and they're trying to say something, but then you try to defend yourself and you say something back really fast, like, no, I'm not fat. No, you're a liar. I didn't even talk to Becky. She was in the bathroom when that happened. So why even talk about that? That didn't happen. And then you just try to argue over and over and it just gets louder and the fights just happen that way. Me and my brother, when, we're younger, whatever. Um, we used to get in those kind of arguments. Um, he was playing whatever game, and I would say, he sucks. Dude, you suck at Tony Hawk's Underground. You're the worst player ever. And he'd just so shut up, Bob Yell. You don't even know how to play. And then we'd just go off and, you know, those little games and stuff. And sometimes it would get terrible, and we'd get into fist fights. Like me and my brother, we were kind of small, and seeing us get into fist fights was kind of funny. One time it happened on my birthday, and it sucked. It was the worst birthday ever. But afterwards, we always made up. We always loved each other. And no matter what, we always made love greater than the fight. And everybody, you agree, you make love greater than the fight. So with this, this is a problem, obviously, people do have, is when we try to speak really fast, 
we end up saying things that we shouldn't say. This is how rumors get started. This is how gossip happens. This is something that we really need to avoid. The Bible says this in James, James 1.19. Understand this, my brothers and sisters. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Amen. What you need to do, instead of trying to get your word out, is to try to open your ears and listen to that person. When you're in an argument, you have to listen. Hear what they have to say. No matter how hard or how much it hurts, hear what they have to say. Be slow to speak, or else you're just gonna get into worse arguments and worse fights. But no matter what the fight, no matter what the argument, always be open to say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that, you know, I, please forgive me. Or even for them, you know what, if they said something, they step out of line, just say, hey, that's not cool, you can't say that. And just, you know, you have to work it out. You can't just live life fighting, holding grudges, because that's just gonna hurt your heart and you're gonna get a negative spirit. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. The second uh, birdie I wanna talk to you about is the white bird. Everybody say the white bird. The white bird. When, you, when you play this one, you launch it, and you tap the screen, uh, egg drops off of it. Can we see the white bird? See how that one looks? Is the castle. Get to the castle. Who wants to go first? Oh, yeah. I do! Hey, hey, all right, Matilda. Uh, oh, he's a bright space. Step right up, kick your wings, legs, and feet inside the sunshine. Shut it! it. Oh, you don't fire! <laughs> can shoot fireballs out of her butt. So that's the white bird. That drops and does a lot of damage. Has anyone ever dropped a word on you that has done a lot of damage into your heart? Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you've dropped something on someone else and you've done damage to someone else. What words do you drop every single day? Are you dropping words of love, words of encouragement? Or are you dropping words that'll do damage? Are you dropping words of hate? Are you dropping negativity to people? What you need to start dropping is some love, okay? There's a lot of things that will get dropped on you that will hurt you, and it will leave a cutting, a cut. And that's, it hurts. But what you need to learn to do is start dropping the positive message. And to start dropping love, no matter what. No matter how you feel. You have to drop the love. Everybody say, I'm gonna drop the love. Drop the love. You have to say something, and I challenge you guys even later on in your life to say something positive to someone, you know? Whether it's, hey, I like your shoes. Oh, I like your shirt. Oh, I like your face, your nose. Girl, your highlight is on point. Say something like that. If, you, if a guy, you ever wanna, you wanna, um, you wanna have a little, you try to talk to a girl, compliment their highlight. Do you guys, do you girls agree? I told you, see, that happens. Be like, girl, your highlight look like these lights on my face. Sweaty, girl. Yeah, you look like a Krispy Kreme donut. What's up? No. That's, trust me, you'll know. Yeah, you guys know. That's not, no. That's good. But That's not good at all. for yourself, I want you guys to drop words even on yourself. You have to be your biggest cheerleader. Everybody agree, amen? You have to be your biggest cheerleader. Because the words that you say, can drop and come back to you like a boomerang. And that's the next one I wanna talk about. Is the boomerang bird. Everybody say the boomerang bird. The boomerang bird. That's the third bird. When this one, when you shoot it and you tap it, it comes back. This one, it does pretty good damage as well. Can we see the boomerang bird? I've seen you do something straight before, right? Let's see, I'm really done Watch him. Oh, this guy looks good. He's gonna make it. Uh, did we win? Uh, no, not quite yet, buddy. Uh, we're still tied. Hey, can we get an ice pack for how? That's the boomerang bird. The, the scripture I want to tell you about this one is Proverbs 18, verse 21. The tongue can lead to death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So the words that you're saying, whether they are to yourself or they are to others, they do leave a negative effect back to you, no matter if you say it outwards or you say it inwards. Um, when you speak positive things, then you're gonna live with this positive spirit. When you say negative things, 
then you're going to live with the negative spirits. The spirit of I can't. The spirit of no. The spirit of why even try. My friend, one of my best friends, had this problem um, where they would have one day and this one day they had was like they treated it as the worst day of their life. No reason why. They just hated themselves for no reason. But the thing about this person was that they were always so negative. They were saying bad things. Oh, this test is coming up. I'm not going to pass it. I'm not going to even study, whatever. So the time when we're texting, they text really dry. Anyone ever texted a dry texter? How do you feel about that? It's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to text someone else now. But don't ever say, if you're texting a dry person, don't ever say, oh my gosh, text me when you're feeling bad, better. All right, has anyone ever sent that text? I made a mistake of sending that text once. It hurt me really bad. So you have to continue on and, say, and try to encourage them. And later on with my best friend, they ended up getting healing. They ended up getting healed. So they weren't having those negative days anymore. And they weren't having those little things of, I can't, I can't do this. Now they're super positive and they're encouraging. And that's because I was able to say, you know what, you can do it. Just study. You can do it. Don't worry about it. Don't say that you can't. I would literally have to say, don't say no. Don't say you can't. Keep trying. You have to do it. You can do it. You can do anything. You have to encourage the ones that are around you to be better for themselves. Because sometimes they don't know how to, how to say I can't. And you have to be the I can in their life when they say no. Anyone agree with that? Thank you, Sammy. I appreciate that. And another verse I want to also talk about with the boomerang is um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 through 37. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you speak will either acquit you or condemn you. So not only will you reap the effects on earth if you're saying negative things by living in the spirit of negativity, but... You'll also see that when you meet face to face with Jesus when on the day of judgment. He'll look at you and say, so what words were you saying when you were on earth? If you were to go right now, all of a sudden, from Sunday until right now, what do you think Jesus would say? Don't answer it. Think about that. What do you think Jesus would say when he meets you right now about the words you're saying? Are they negative or are they positive? Are you saying I can't? No. There's no way I'm going to even try, or I can do it. I'm going to try. Jesus, help me, because I, I can't do it. But Lord, I know if I have you, I can do all things. Anyone agree with that? Amen for that. And if there's people that are speaking negativity to you, how are you handling the words that are getting launched to you? How are you handling the angry words that are getting launched into your life? Are you letting them affect you? Or are you letting them, you're trying to block them out, try to block them out. So maybe people have dropped words on you saying you're ugly, you're fat, you're too skinny, you're weird, you look like Abdiel, something like that. People are being negative to you. But we need to exchange what's been said about you, those words, and exchange them with what God has put into you. Anyone agree with that? And then instead of being like these birds, will be like the mighty eagle to watch the eagle. says this you are a chosen people you are royal priests a holy nation God's very own possession as a result you can show others the goodness of God for he's called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light first John 4 4 says this but you belong to God my dear children you have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Galatians 3.26 For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 5 For you are all children of the light and of the day. 
We don't belong to darkness and night.